it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, the database administration team has asked you to help them improve the performance of the new database server running on Compute Engine. The database is used for importing and normalizing the company's performance statistics. It is built with MySQL running on Debian Linux. They have an N1 standard 8 virtual machine with 80 GP of SSD zonal persistent disk. What should they change to get better performance from the system in a cost effective manner? So the key context is that the database server has hit a ceiling and it is becoming a bottleneck in terms of performance. We have to figure out ways in which we can make this MySQL server more performant. Going deeper into the requirements, we have to improve the performance of the new database server. Our typical options are to upgrade the CPU, increase the memory, improve the IO, or change the DB technology. This is built with MySQL right now. Now other requirements indicate that we want to retain MySQL and therefore changing the DB technology, say something to like Spanner or a NoSQL database is not an option. They have an N1 standard 8 virtual machine, which has eight virtual CPUs, 30 GB of RAM, which is fairly good, right? For the kind of things that we need to get done, it seems that this is reasonable so far. They have provisioned 80 gigabytes of SSD zonal persistent disk, which is a fair amount of space for DB. Now, MySQL itself could scale to many terabytes, but we have not got any indication that space is an issue. So the DB is definitely staying within these limits and that has not become a problem. The question now is how do we get better performance while also making it cost effective? So we don't want to spend too much. Typically a migration to another database or different technology might be useful, but then it would increase the cost a lot. We also don't want to provision way more virtual CPUs, right? way more powerful uh, VMs uh, because it will increase the cost, cost drastically and we don't want to do that. So with those requirements understood, now let's look at the options we have. Option A suggests increase the virtual machine's memory to 64 GB. Here again, there is no indication in the question that memory is a bottleneck, right? The available um, memory we have, which is 30 GB, seems to be fairly good with the N1 standard 8 virtual machine. Now, typically increasing the memory is a good option for better performance, right? Most uh, programs that are very memory bound would be, uh, would witness an improvement in performance if we increase the memory. However, databases like these are very IO bound, right? If you're using an in-memory database, fine, increasing the memory would be useful, but if not, with a case like MySQL, you're not going to find a huge difference just by increasing the memory. So option A is not looking very viable for us. Okay, there are some things that are good with it, but we can't see an exact match with the particular context or situation that we're dealing with. Option B suggests that we create a new virtual machine running PostgreSQL. Now, it's not cost effective to replace the database, right? We will require a lot more time to test with the um, new database and then to do the process of migration. So the cost is going to increase dramatically and that's not something that we want. Moreover, MySQL and PostgreSQL would have comparable performance in this scenario. Right? Both of them, though they have different optimization techniques, the approach is fairly similar. And just by changing database, we might not fully solve this problem. Sooner or later, we might hit the issue with a comparable database like PostgreSQL. So option B is not viable for us. 
And let's check option D, which says migrate their performance metrics warehouse to BigQuery. So BigQuery would be great to speed up analytics, right? And it would also be cost effective. It is a, a serverless database, which means you don't have to allocate anything prior. And the storage itself is cost effective. However, it is not indicated in the question that analytics is the only use case. In fact, we do want MySQL. We probably have it for transactional requirements and therefore changing the, the technology of the database would not be allowed, right? Though BigQuery supports transactions too, it is not optimized for that, right? So in this case, changing the database technology would not be a good approach and therefore we will eliminate option D also. Option C suggests that we dynamically resize the SSD persistent disk to 500 GB, which means essentially we don't shut down the machine, we, or, uh, we don't have to shut down the VM to increase the size, right? So while it's running, we can increase the size of the SSD persistent disk, and we're saying increase it from 80 GB to 500 GB. But how would this help? There was no indication that there was a problem with the 80 GB size, right? There was uh, no error saying that, hey, there's no more space on the disk. So that was not the issue. But what we need to understand is that block storage performance on Google Cloud is directly proportional to disk size. Right? So the more you increase the disk size, the greater will be the IO performance. So the IOPS increases with the amount of disk space that you have provisioned. Right? So in this case, if you want to uh, increase the performance by a certain amount for IOPS alone, then you can increase the size of the SSD disk in this case, the persistent disk, by that much. So, in picking up this option, there is obviously an increased cost, right? So, you're not paying for the extra disk space that you're probably not using. However, the cost is not going to be too much compared to the other options, and therefore, it is still cost effective. Considering all of that, therefore, the right answer to this requirement would be to option C, which would be to dynamically resize the SSD persistent disk to a larger size. Well, how are you going to inform others of the super GCP content? Just one way, like it, share it, let them get to know of it, and you, you subscribe. <laughs>